speaks in this particular scripture, you know, it's a very powerful word, you know, you know, we look at the book over here, the book of Habakkuk chapter 1, we're going to come out of King James Version, there's a lot of other versions we may look at, we may have some music from other seasons, we have Sunday in the background, but never mind that, let's go ahead and just say, let's see, focus on this word here, you know, but uh, what this word we see in Habakkuk, I mean, that word Habakkuk, you know, it's kind of hard to pronounce, but it's, uh, it's different Bible says Habakkuk had a burden that the prophet did see. And it says over in the second verse, Oh Lord, how long will I cry? Now, when we look at the scripture, we want to think about what, what's going on in the beginning of this particular scripture. You know, what's going on? You know, um, he's seeing a lot of things that's going on as we as men of God. We see the law, we see the things that's going on in different people in different positions. And it seems like those who are in the most vulnerable positions always receiving the worst part of the things in still society that seem to live a little bit better or have better advantage than we are, especially when it comes down to the law, dealing with different, you know, just things in the ethnicity department. We see that all the time and, and everywhere we mostly go because the narrow mindedness of the people who are in position to think that way. You know, if we understood that God created everyone and He created everyone to be equal, and we take the law, we understand that we just go over to the area. Just take your Bibles, and, you know, you have to go over there, but you write down to the book of Galatians, and you look at the book of Galatians, and you look at Galatians chapter 5, and look at that particular 14th verse, it tells you it's not laws, it's a law, and the first part of that law is love, it goes on down in the book of Galatians, and it kind of tells how we should walk in the spirit, and we should deal with lust of the flesh, and then it goes on down and talks about in that particular area, that 19 verse down to the 21st verse, all these things that the flesh has got the ability to pick up as it goes along, especially as of right now. You know, the overwhelming majority of uh, internet and things that are going out, nothing wrong with the internet, but if you're losing the right purpose, it can serve, it can serve a great purpose. But as of right now, it's, it's, it's a lot of things that's been misdirected, <coughs> mis and it's been scrutinized, and it's kind of come against a lot of people that's making them feel you know, somewhat adequate about the process when God said he created everyone equal. Habakkuk says once again, we look at the, the book of Habakkuk in, in verse 1, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. He saw some things that wasn't right. And he cried out to the Lord, he said, Lord, how long shall I cry? And I will not hear. He don't feel he's being heard. A lot of times we feel that way. When our ministries are not moving like they're supposed to be moving and things not favor God, it's not falling in our life. We find ourselves covering it up with other things from a material or a physical point of view to try to please that time other than taking that time to understand that sometimes God puts us in a crunch for a reason other than just trying to buy our way out or what we say uh, picture our way out as if we got it this way 
what God says over in that verse too, he said, even out of the of violence, and thou should not save. Look what he says. Even cry out unto thee of violence. He said, you still ain't saying nothing. You're the lawgiver. You don't want to us to obey all your commands, your statutes, and your precepts. But you're going to see later on in the scripture an amazing event that's going to take place. And when you look at just not the book of Habakkuk in terms of just the reading of Habakkuk was saying, look at it in your own life. He declares the word of God over here in the third verse. Why does thy show me iniquity? We see it all day long. We see it in the news. We see the shootings. We see the killings. We see the, the mishandling of the law. And different, different, you know, we just see a lot of things. And we kind of wonder, what's going on? And we talk out loud against these things, what, you know, just messed up. It's just, you know, just, you know, yada, yada, yada. We just murmur. The Bible tells us don't complain, don't murmur. Always pray. This is what James tells us. Pray. Fervent prayers. If you believe in the power of prayer, then you will pray in the midst of adversity. Don't complain. Because God's plan for life is really more than what you can see. Matter of fact, you look at Psalms 84, 11. Just speaking about the process of God's favor. He declares the word of God in Psalms 84, 11. He says, I'm a son in a shield. And then he says, there's nothing I will withhold. Now, this is a firm word that's coming from the kingdom of God. In order to understand what he says in Psalms 84, 11, you have a mindset to understand what he says according to the word of God, that he's not a God that he should lie. Now, that's in Numbers 23, 19 to 21, but you come way back on the side and you understand in the New Testament side, God declares and decree even if he says that, He's not a God that he should lie, not a son of a man that he should have to repent. But he tells us something strong in Psalm 84, 11. He tells us something very strong. He say, there's nothing I will withhold. Matter of fact, you go to the first part of just looking at Psalms 84, 11. Just look at this Psalm 84, 11. Just look at that 11 verse. He said, first of all, I'm a son in the shield. If you understand what a shield does, the word of God said his word is designed to project when you see a Roman soldier fighting with a shield, he protects himself from oncoming danger with a sh- with a actually not only just a shield but a javelin in his hand. The javelin is illustrated in opposition as being like the word of a spear. It's a spear. It's got the ability to decapitate. It's got the ability to pierce through any negative thing that the enemy tries to come at me and you and make us feel vulnerable to the point that makes us feel like we are not with God. I want you to really understand and get a good illustration or what this pastor was telling you. And I'm going to go to another scripture here. And I want you to just kind of notice what I'm saying here in terms of that particular scripture in Psalms 84 11. When he says in Psalms 84 11 that I'm a son in the shield, he says, he's actually saying, My word based on Isaiah 55 11 goes forth. Are y'all here? It doesn't come back void. Even when it don't seem like things are working on your behalf, God says, Yet the power of my word. It's in your tongue. You can change the course of your life with your mouth. The word of God declares that even the petition of coming to a person wanting salvation. You go to Romans uh, 10, 8, 9. That's the life I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. Matter of fact, when he says in Romans 10, 8, 9, he talks about really what's said out of the word of God. You got to speak the words out of your mouth. Your words shape the words declare the decree. First Corinthians, second chapter, ninth verse. He gives you a whole understanding about how the power of God moves in such an extraordinary way when it's individualized and understood how the, the ability what it has to do. First Corinthians, the second chapter, the ninth verse, he tells us that he's not a God that he shall lie, not a son of a man that he has to repent. But, but hold on a second, I, I, we want to get that. He said, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I want to get that he's not a son of a man that he should have to repent because he gives you a solid word in that word of First Corinthians. In that second chapter, the ninth verse, he says, I will give you things that your eyes will behold. I'll give you things your ears will behold. He said, eyes have not and ears, look here, have not and neither has it. Look what he's saying. It ain't even entered in. When you begin to pray, God will give you information that ain't even in the book. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? The Bible declares when you come down to the area in the first Corinthians, in that second chapter, in the ninth verse, but you come on down to the 10th verse, he talks a very strong, he said, it's got to be revealed through the Spirit. Now, Paul makes a strong word in the book of Philippians, when Paul's talking to the people of Philippi, and he says in the second verse of the book of Philippians, he said, if there be any consolation, if any bowels of miracles, Paul begins on to speak about the process of let this mind be in you to be also in Christ Jesus. 
He goes on down to the scripture, begin to read. He said, do nothing in vulgary or strife. If you want to walk in the anointing of God, the power of God, you're going to have to learn how to walk upright. And when you walk upright, he comes back to Psalms 84, 11, and makes it very clear. That, look, when you walk upright, there's nothing that I will hold from you. And my word, not only in Psalms 84, 11, but Isaiah 55, 11, says, my word won't go void. It's a word where I'll speak and it accomplishes whatever. God said, you got the same power in your mouth. In spite of all the things that's going on around you. The Bible says sometimes you got to have an eye of a spirit. And if you go back to 1 Corinthians, you look at that particular area in the second chapter. You look at it in the 10th verse. He says, all revealed through the spirit, but he brings men in position. And this ideology and ideals and education. He said, man no knows the things of a man. But no man knows the things of the spirit. See, seminary can't teach you the power of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing wrong with you going to seminary. I've been to a lot of them. But I'm trying to get you to see that something far more greater than a man's education. This is one of the reasons I'm saying it's okay for you to read your commentaries. That's fine. That's a written pronunciation of understanding what man has given you. But when you dig deep and understand, if he wrote it, and it's already been pre-script, then think what God can give you that you can be able to speak out of your own mouth. If he can give you a verse about some information that's been wrote down pertaining to scripture, and then if you meditate according to Joshua 1 and 8, what do you think God would do for you? The word of God declares over here, and you look at the book of Habakkuk, and Habakkuk begins to speak over in the third verse. He said, why do you show me iniquities and cause me to behold grievance? I'm grieving. By some of the things I'm seeing, I got a God that's on my side. For spoils and violence, are before me. I'm looking at all of these things. I know it's not right. And I'm hoping and praying that God will come in and deal with it real quick. But see, God is a God of, of he's, he's, he's slow to anger. Not like we. Not like Habakkuk. Habakkuk said, I want something done right now. But God is getting to understand that, say, that, that when you look at Psalms, uh, what is it, Psalms, uh, I believe Psalms 37, fright not that's uh, because of evil doers or evil doing. Because God is always going to understand the word that, you know, never mind them. I got a time and place for them. Your job is to stay in your lane, complete your assignment, and do your work. Don't find yourself running out of bowels and getting penalized based on what you see somebody else does. Are y'all listening to this apostle? Habakkuk declares in the creeds over here, and he said, For spoil and violence are before me, and they are raised up strife and contention. Can y'all understand what he's telling me, what he's seeing? I'm a prophet of God. And I got the ability to speak and declare, call things that be not. If I want to call havoc on this, I can do it. Paul said, I mean, uh, uh, Habakkuk said, it's not even happening. He said, I'm explaining to the people. But in the fourth verse, he said, therefore the law is slack. He said, Lord, look here, look here. I want you to really understand what he said. He said, if we're supposed to obey all the commands, all the statutes, and all the precepts, it seems to be slacking right now. Because you tell me if men continue to do wickedly and do things that's not a pleasing to you, then you say damnation will come upon them. But Habakkuk said, the more word I preach to the people about the good things, the more hell and violence is coming forth. He said, for the law is slack. They don't got no power. These people are not listening, even today. Come on, somebody. You don't want to talk to me. Not only just in the natural world, but even in the churches, even in the schools, even in your household. Ah, can I talk to somebody? I just want to take a little something, but that the Holy Spirit is whispering in my ear. He said, judgment do never come forth, for the wicked do depress about. The righteousness, therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. L listen, listen. For the wicked do compress about righteousness before wrong judgment proceeds. I can do all the hell. I won't, and I'm still going to stand like I got it going on. I'm going to have the homes. I'm going to have the cars. I'm going to have the money. I'm going to have the church. I'm going to have the, everything that make you the people. I'm going to have whatever it, that's pleasing to the eyesight of people. I heard Apostle Walker see somebody, one of the word of God said, Bleed, you got to build up your most holy faith. You got to find somewhere sometimes. You got to learn how to put your, your, your mouth where your, you put your feet where your mouth supposed to be, the way he puts it. Sometimes you got to quit just talking, and you got to learn how to walk it. When the word of God comes over here, and he speaks to you and I, therefore the law slacks. I, I want to take you somewhere when David speaks a word, when the Holy Spirit gave me some, some five, six years ago. 
and I was sitting in my kitchen and wondering about some things, and the Holy Spirit just began to just kind of you know just kind of comfort me, and He was giving me a word of comfort because I was in distress about some of the things I seen that's going on in some of these places we call ministries or in the life of people who call themselves men of God. Now see, I'm not telling my I'm just telling you the truth. As I began to understand the purpose of why it seemed to be so hard, and why it seemed, you know, I'm complaining, I'm kind of like a buck right now. You know, I'm working hard, trying to walk out right, trying to do right. And I see men doing violence things behind closed doors in the midst outside the pulpit. And it seemed like they got it going on. All kind of lying and all kind of stuff is going on. And still there was so much stuff outside the pulpit. But yet they seem to still get blessed. You know? Well, the guy come to me and I complained about it for about a week. <laughs> Probably more than a week. And I heard the word of God over here in Psalms 12. He said, help, Lord, for God's men has ceased. That word right there caught me when he declared it to me. He said, for God's men cease, for the faithful falls from among the children of man. This is the word he's telling me. Once you get a taste of what seems to be good and favorable to you, you begin to start going your own way. You begin to start using and doing things that will please you more than it pleases God. Come on, I'm talking to you. He said, well, they speak vanity, everyone, with his neighbor, and with flattering lips. Y'all understand what that means? With a devil heart, they do speak. And one thing in front of the people of God, another thing behind closed doors. I got a whole different lifestyle. I can speak so good. I can make people to jump and shout. I can give all kind of pyro tactics in my church, lights, displays. I can do everything to make them look good. But Abaka says, these people are wicked. They're showmen for the people on earth. They have no way to put their hands to them and touch their heart. He declares in the word over here, in this particular third verse, for the Lord will cut off all flattering lips. The same thing he's talking to Abuk about. For the Lord will cut off all flattering lips and tongues, look at me, that speak at proud things. Who have said with our tongue, we will prevail. That means you go about doing your own way. You take the word, you twist it in scriptures, and you use people, you, and you, and you charlatan the people to make your lifestyle better than what it is. And you lie to them about things that God said, and he never said. Y'all say, I ain't sending them. That's what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 23. He said, I ain't sending them. They go before me and say, I sent them, but I ain't sending them. He says on the, in that fourth verse, in the second half, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the pressing of the poor and the shining of the needy, now I will rise, says the Lord, and set him in safety, him that puffeth at him. For the word of the Lord are pure words, silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. My word won't go void. Are y'all listening to what he's telling me here? Don't matter what they say and what they're doing. The Bible tells me in that scripture, it's a way that seems right until men the way he's doing things. My road, my ring, my big building, my all this, everything that makes him look good. I can still club, hang out, yada dada, do a little roadie duty on the stage and see my and do all these things that make him look good. But I I'm I am i am handling I'm mishandling the word. I'm so too many people are handling the word loosely. They didn't got too ugh, they didn't got too friendly with God. They forgot the Bible says the fear of God is to be afraid of him. The love of him is to fear him. They have no fear. He says in the seventh verse, for they keep them, O Lord, that shall preserve them from this generation forever. For the Bible says the wicked walks on every side, look here, when valeth men are exalted. They'll follow the trends that people love most from a physical point of view. They'll shut the Holy Ghost down. And they'll go by doing their own way. Can I, can I talk to y'all over in the book of Matthew? Can I go there for a minute? The Bible declares according to, <clears throat> to the book of Matthew. I'll go to the book of Matthew. I want you to really kind of roll with me on the book of Matthew. Let's look at some of the book of Matthew. It's been an ongoing word throughout my ministry from times back, and it deals with a lot of relevancy in terms of things that are going on. But in the book of Matthew chapter 7, you go to Matthew 7, and you go down to that area around that 13th verse. And the Bible says, look at the 12th verse before we go on down to the, 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 the 15th in this particular area of Scripture. He says over in the 12th verse, Therefore, all things, whatever you would, that men do to you. Now, now what he's saying right there, all the things you would do that men do to you, 
do either so unto them. For this is the law of the prophets. Now, we just talked about Galatians 5 and 15, laws of the kingdom. We can come back over and look at the word of God. We can bring this back to um, uh, John 13, 34, 35. And you know, it says in John 13, 34, 35, love them as I have loved you by this they may know. But again, it gets out of, and men begin to get out of order because the straight, he said, look at, because it is the straight gate. Let's go back to the 13th verse. kind of missed the 13th, but go 13th verse. He said, enter into at the straight gate. What is a straight gate? Well, a straight gate tells me if I'm going to go in there with the Lord right then, I got to understand what it says in Romans 10, 8, 9. I got to come to a confession. I got to have myself in a position to really understand that some things I may not ought to do as I come into Christ. Based on the word of God in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, as you can live hell and then everything you want to do behind closed doors, your Ephesians chapter 2, now I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the number, I'm going to give all. Look here, I'm going to take all that stuff that you've done away from you. I'm going to forgive you, based on the word of God in the book. What is it? Romans chapter five, justified by faith, and now I got free access to the kingdom. Where my crazy and messed up and no good self, a wrench like me, God still loved me. He says over oh, in the thirteenth verse in the book of Matthew chapter seven, enter into the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way, listen to what he's telling you, that leadeth to destruction. And many there which go in entreat. The other thing that's going on that people like to do, and it's called trend. They don't understand that the word of God got something a little more stronger than a trend. He declared the word that I gave according to Jeremiah 1 and 5, created you, I bored you, I designed you to be a prophet before the nation. And how dare you try to copycat and run up behind somebody and take the very anointing that I put in your life as if it was just a common thing. Meaning you don't want to get on your knees and understand what it said, not just based on Jeremiah 1 and 5, but going back over to Jeremiah 29 and 11 and getting on your knees and asking God what is that he has for you. Jeremiah 1 and 5 tells you, you were born, designed, and created to be a prophet before the nation. The Bible says you were sanctified and set apart. And the only way you're going to get what that set apart is for you is you got to understand what the Word of God tells you in Jeremiah 20 and 11, based on the Word of God in Joshua 1 and 8. If you don't know how to go to Jeremiah 29 and 11 and understand the thought and the plan that they got for you, like rather than running up behind somebody else because you are called, you want to be a part of a crowd or a talent or a soothsayer or a shell dean because you want to be recognized. So you forget about what God has told you in the beginning. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. No, I want to run in the familiar with everybody. I want to do what everybody else is doing. The word of God tells me in that particular area, you go back to the book of Matthew, you look at Matthew chapter 13, look what it says. Enter into the straight gate, because wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, many now, there be which go in entreat. You, you're going to hang out there. You're going to love it. That's what where everybody's going for the fireworks. That's where everybody's going to the next club. Let's go where, everybody, where all the crowd hangs out at. Sometimes when you walk in there, you knock and tell you a story. Man, sometimes when God teaches you how to be in a lonely place. Man, the woman God, listen to me. Like, let me hold this for a minute. I can tell you from my heart, and I know it from my heart, that me and this woman of God, based on because we're in a biracial relationship, we have known, and I don't know for a fact, our certain part of our families had even, now I'm just saying, then it don't even want to have nothing to do with us. Even when sometimes we're in tight positions on certain things that all people get into. You have family members that don't want to do nothing for you because this person is a white person and this person is a black person. Now, you, you don't want to talk to them. Even when you're in certain churches, they'll look at you as if you ain't got what it takes. Because now they feel you have crushed the anointing by coming to a, what we call a divided relationship. Oh, it's some weird people out here. They'll look at you and they'll deny the fact of what God got on you, knowing that the power of the Holy Spirit dwells in you and it's on you. But they don't want to give you the acknowledgement. Why is that? Because they want to go about and do something with their own family member, with their own people, to put them more up higher than the prophet that God he put in their life and show them who is all. See, this is what you call, this is what you call the Pharisees. They don't want to recognize the anointing. They want their own anointing, or they want something to be a part of their anointing if they want to be another anointing. Now, don't recognize him. Recognize what I put in, what I'm telling you. God will put a prophet right in your face, and you only want to recognize him. God will put a savior right in the mouth of a person, 
and he'll raise them up in a generation of family to save them from the wiles of the enemy. And they don't even want to even speak or say anything to them or treat them as they are part of what they were doing. And people wonder why I stayed in myself. Oh, you better believe there's a lot of stuff a lot of prophets get into. But I'm telling you, man, woman, God, you're going to learn how to learn how to walk on your own. Because when God got a call on your life, they're going to come at you. They're going to throw the kitchen sink at you. They're going to hate you. They're going to despise you. And they're going to dislike you for nothing you didn't even do. This whole ministry, from the time we raised this whole ministry up to what it is now, I can count on my hands out of the 30 years we've been doing this ministry that people ever gave to this ministry. Me and my wife worked hard and we gave. Family members don't give. My family member, her family member, I, I just call it like I see it. They did not us and what we do, and they'll go run off somewhere else and be with somebody else. Whether they recognize the anointing that's on their family that can help them come out of whatever they're in, they'd rather have the mark in the eye of a jealous individual, an unconcerned individual, and want to run off somewhere. They, oh, they don't, that's Paul. Your own family will come against you. And because the anointing on your life is so great, the Bible says you can go through some stuff, but you got to deal with it. When the, when the word of God comes back and he tells this man of God that even as you begin to walk in the straight gate, that's going to be people that, that's going to people that's going to walk in the same direction that you walk in, but you got to make sure you change lanes because he declares the word over in the 14th verse because the straight gate is a narrow, it's a narrow way. It's a way that, it, it, look, it leadeth to life. It's not like all the other gates. Listen to me. It ain't got where you got all the homes, you got all the cars, you got all the money, you're all the big time, you're supposed to this, you're supposed to that. And you, you, you see them people fading away. You see them fading away slowly. The more you see them, they look, the more, the more, sometimes the more you see them, the more mummified they look. They just head into their place quicker than they go because they still don't want to recognize the, lift, the gift that God has on that individual's life. They're not going to recognize it. You might just call it like it is. People don't dislike you. People don't hate you. You bring it to your own self and not respect what you know you see on an individual because of what they do. So you rather run from somebody else because you don't like that what you see in them or know you like the relationship they have. And so you run off somewhere else. And you give them more respect because now you feel that you feel like you did a nine and nine and nine on them. And you don't have to do that. Oh, oh, I know what I'm talking about. He said, because the straight gate is a narrow. The way that lead it to life, and few there, look here, few there be that find it. A lot of people ain't going to see it. But the word of God makes it clear. Don't get caught up in 13, but not understand what 15 means. Beware of the false prophets. They were, it's, the Bible says in this day and time, it'd be a great falling away. There are people so messed up on this thing that say, God told me to tell you, a God is going to do. They sit there and like they talk to the Lord and tell you like they're like going out of direct communicating line with them. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You better be careful. Because I'm not telling you despise prophecy. I'm telling you everything you receive from that was said as a prophet, you feel it through the Holy Spirit. If it be God, then God's going to show you it's him. But if not, as I always say, my old good friend Alan Carter left out here last year. If it ain't in the word, then kick it to the curb. Because sometimes you got to understand, you got to shut people down. People who wondering and speaking over you and telling you things and then saying negative things about you behind your back and still grinning in your face. Mm. That's why you don't see the apostle always talking with a lot of people. I don't hang around with a lot of people. None of family members and family members. I just don't hang around with a lot of people. Because people are kind of funky sometimes. And they got that mentality about the church today. And I don't know what kind of church we got today. I don't know what it is, but I know you better be careful. The Bible declares in the creeds in that particular area of the book of Habakkuk. He said, For the law slacken and judgment do it not never go forth. And the wicked does compress about the righteousness. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. Behold, among the heathens regard the wondrous and marvelous. For I will work a work in the days which you would not even believe, though they told you in your ear. The Bible declared in the creed that even when he was speaking the words about the complaint from one down to six, the Bible said the children entered in on the scene. 
The Bible declared that the Chaldees, Nebuchadnezzar came in and wiped out everything. Let me tell you something, man, the woman got, I got to get out of here. I can't stay with you too long. Sometimes you ain't got to put your hands on your enemy. You ain't got to touch them. When the word of God says pray for those who spite to lead you, God will use somebody else to beat your enemy down. You just got to pray for them. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? The Bible declares when we come back in this particular area, and it's going to be third and fourth verse to this, how the swiftness of the judgment was when he speaks over here in the area of the southern verse. He's talking about the army of the Chaldees. How swift they, they, they horses were. How death defined the judgment was that, that, that proceeded as the man Habakkuk was speaking out of his mouth. The enemy came and began to pounce on them. Sometimes man, one got to have people who do you wrong. They'll do you wrong and they'll wait to look down on you when you get out of here. No, you won't look down on me. You look down on yourself. Because I declare the word of God in this life and in this ministry over my wife and over my children that you won't get that opportunity on them unless it be an anointed thing. And so if something follow proceed right behind it that you thought you spoke that ain't right. You be careful how you put your mouth against a man or woman of God. You be careful how you treat anybody in the body of Christ. This man of God, Habakkuk, spoke a word about the slackness of the wickedness that was going on in Judah. And he was speaking the words out of his mouth about all the negative things that was going on in Judah. They didn't want to say anything. And the children ended on the scene. The Bible said, I can knock your enemy out as quick as your mouth closed. He said, sometimes you got to shut up talking about your enemies. Sometimes you got to sit back and just watch God do his thing. Man, the woman got on Apostle Charles. I was here at the NOC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. It's always a pleasure. To be with you guys here at the NOC Studios. To be with the word of God. 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 We're about three more weeks out. Getting our studio back.